Alright, 6.3 multiplying a vector by a scalar. So we let vector v be any vector and let k be a scalar. Then k times vector v is a vector that is absolute of k times as long as vector v. So we're looking at the magnitude changing. If k is greater than 0, then k times vector v has the same direction as vector v. If k is less than 0, then we can say that k times vector v has the opposite direction as vector v. If k equals 0, we can say that k vector v is the 0 vector. So, if we say, say that the magnitude of v is 4, then 5 times vector v, the magnitude of 5 vector v, is equal to 5 times 4, which is 5 times the vector v. 5 times 4 is going to be 20. So the magnitude of 5v is equal to 5 times the value, uh, the magnitude of vector v, which is the, in, in this case going to be 20. All right, let's say I change that. Let's say I had vector v is equal to 4, and I wanted to know the magnitude of negative 3v. What will that result in? Well, it will be 3 times 4, or 3 times vector v, which is 12. The reason the negative disappears is, remember, a negative in terms of a vector changes the direction. It does not change the length of the particular vector, the magnitude. The magnitude, we, uh, we don't include direction. We only need the length of a particular vector. Properties of scalar multiplication. So let's look at the different properties. m times vector a plus vector b is equal to ma plus mb. 0 times a vector is equal to the 0 vector. If we have 1 times vector a, the answer to that is just vector a. m plus n times vector a is going to equal m times vector a plus n times vector a. And finally, number 5, m times n a, n vector a, is going to equal m times n times vector a, or n times m a, if that turns out to be a little bit better. Looking back at example number 3, that is the same as saying 1 times vector a is equivalent to vector a. All right. Let's look at collinear. What does collinear mean? Collinear means that if two vectors are scalar multiples of one another, they are said to be collinear. An example of that is when you have a question like this, you're asked in rectangle ABCD, J and K are midpoints of AB and AD respectively, we let vector u equal vector aj, and vector v equal vector ak. You are to express each vector in terms of u and v. So express, and here's the first one, ab, da, jk. These are all the different vectors we're going to be looking at. So we're going to do that on the next one. So vector AB, vector DA, and vector GAK. All right, so again, here's our drawing. And there's our U and our V, shown there in red and green. And you want to know the value of vector AB. To get from A to B, you actually have to double vector U. Because from A 
to B is double the length of A to J. A to J is vector U. Double that will give us A to B. So two vector U is the equivalent to vector AB. Let's look at the next one, DA. What does that mean? We want to go from D to A. Well, the value of that is going to be negative 2V because from D to A we're actually going in the opposite direction. So negative 2 vector V. Alright, last one, JK, vector JK. What does that mean? So you need to go from J to K. Well, if we remember the addition properties, we should remember that it's going to be vec the negative of vector u plus vector v. What is that also equivalent to? Well, vector v minus vector u is an equivalent statement. Let's try one more. j to c. What would the value be from j all the way to c? Well, we know j to b is equal to a to j, so j to b would be 1, and then b to c to get to the other side, to get from j to c. To do that, you would need vector u plus two vector v's in order to be able to get the value of jc. So again, vector u is over here, plus two v's to go up to here. Next one. B, D. B, going to D, has some challenges upon itself. First of all, it should be noted that you have negative 2U plus 2V. What do we do there? Well, you could have common factored it so that you have negative 2 and in brackets U minus V we pull out the negative 2. For u minus v, folks, u minus v is going to give us uh, the ants, uh, sorry, u, yeah, u minus v are multiplied by 2. So it's double the length of u minus v. All right, next one. Example number 2. The vectors a, b are unit vectors that make an angle of 60 degrees with each other. Part A. Calculate the value of magnitude of 2A minus B. 2 vector A minus vector B. What will the value, the magnitude of that be, given the information? Well, folks, you have your vector A and you have your vector B and you need to find some other information. Well, we know that the two angles A and B make a 60 degree angle between the two vectors. If we were to extend vector B, so it would be B plus A, you would know that the angle between B and A now the red and the blue would be 120 degrees. So we need the value of 2 vector A minus vector B. 2 A minus vector B. What does that mean? Well, you double the A's and you change the direction of the B so that you have 2 A minus B right up there. And the result will be the green arrow coming up this way. And that result will be magnitude of 2A minus B. And the angle that separates the green arrow from the blue arrow, the angle there from north or from the bearing of north, is going to be a certain value. How do we know what value it is? Well. First of all, we need to do Pythagorean Theorem. And, and what else is important is that 
in order to find the value, we don't know if it's a right angle triangle, so we can't use Pythagorean theorem or any of the ratios. What we need to use now is the cosine law. Using the cosine law, we could find that angle. Cosine law, you know that vector A is a unit vector. A unit vector means it has a length of 1. So 2A has a length of 2. B has a length of 1. So you would have 2 squared, which is 4, plus 1, minus 2 times 2 times 1, times cosine of 60. You end up with an answer of root 3, and that equals the length of 2a minus b, which is what we're trying to find. The value of the length of that will be 1.7321. Alright folks, that's it for this video. Look for the next one. Take care.